Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today you join me in the historic medieval city of Maastricht and I am on a visit of self-care to this wonderful city to have some time to myself. And today's subject that I'm going to talk about is the value and importance of self-care in men's lives because it is a topic which is grossly overlooked by many of us. So today I'm going to give you my five tips that I use to keep myself in the best possible health and well-being state and perhaps you might be able to find something here which you can employ in your life also. Now the first tip I'm going to give for you when it comes to looking after yourself in terms of well-being and self-care is knowledge of self-care within itself because it is often totally overlooked as I say and it's not a commodity it is an essential in your life to perform at the very highest level to be the best version of yourself you have to take self-care as an important subject in your life now I know it's not easy to do we're very very busy we're juggling busy work lives we're possibly you know providing for a family we're looking after our children we may be caring for elderly parents or other people in our lives but you will rue the day that you do not invest in yourselves because surveys show that many times people think of their own well-being in terms of the well-being of those around them you know my kids are okay so I'm okay my wife is not in a good position right now so actually I'm not feeling so good either it's a mistake not to prioritize yourself the analogy is often used it's a bit like when you get onto an airplane you know and the, the cabin crew will say put your mask on first in the case of an emergency the oxygen mask before you help somebody else because you can't help somebody else if you become a casualty yourself and that's the way to look at it when it comes to self-care now many younger people totally overlook the importance of self-care and they fail to invest in setting up regimes which will help them as they go through life that's a big mistake equally as you will invest in your education in your fitness you have to invest in yourself as well so my first tip for you was quite simple value your own self-care because if you don't nobody else is going to now my second tip for you might sound a little strange to many people but it is solitude can be your friend when it comes to self-care now solitude is a rare commodity in most people's lives we don't often get the opportunity to spend some time alone with our thoughts allowing us to do some self-reflection some introspection set some goals prepare for personal growth when you know we're always uh, trapped in this ever ongoing circle like a hamster wheel of work life work life family kids health all of these other things which distract us now a lot of people don't understand what solitude is they confuse it with loneliness and that's not the case at all I often think of solitude in a way as curated loneliness you're choosing to be on your own to give you give yourself some some space from the noise of life to allow you to think a little better to put some distance between your normal life and what you wish to do in the future I often use opportunities like this when I'm away on my own traveling for a few days in a strange place to think about what my future aspirations are my goals how I'm going to get there and I often write them down in my journal I've got a journal with me now carried around with me if I go into a coffee shop I can use the opportunity to write out any thoughts and ideas that I've had and that comes around only because I've made space for myself to do this with solitude curated loneliness now I know it's a bit of a treat all right I've been able to come away for four days on my own checked into a hotel in another country in a lovely city and this is a perfect time to give some thought and some time to myself self-care I know not for everybody this is possible so just maybe sometimes going for a walk in the countryside or just spending some time alone on a weekend in a tent or something of that nature can be all that you need to get yourself some space from ordinary life 
and invest in yourselves. So gentlemen, solitude, it can be your friend. Now my next tip for you is really about doing something different, confronting your fears. Because in our ordinary lives, it's all too easy to slide into a routine, isn't it? And we just get used to doing the things which are comfortable for us. So much so that it, it seems very strange and frightening if we step outside the parameters of our normal ordinary lives. And sometimes that can hold us back because an opportunity will arise, maybe a chance to go somewhere, to do something. And we don't like that because it's stepping outside of our normal status quo. So we may decline it because we prefer the comfortable, the easy, the routine. Don't get me wrong, right? I have been there and I'm often there. Um, just the other day, I planned this trip quite some time ago. I knew I had some things to do here and I was very happy about it a couple of months ago. Then last week, I realized that, you know, the date and the time of me leaving my lovely family home was upon me. I had to, I had to get, in a, get on an aeroplane, fly to another country, navigate uh, an internal public transport system, find my way to a hotel. And I'm gonna be perfectly honest, folks. When we travel, my wife tends to take care of all of those arrangements because she's a born administrator. She loves planning. So I kind of just let her do it. And I have fallen into the habit of not doing it myself. And so immediately I was catapulted outside of my own comfort zone. And I tell you now, on Saturday night, because I was leaving early Sunday morning to come here, if you had said to me, you don't have to go, something's gone wrong, cancel it. I would have been more than happy to do that because I would have loved to have stayed by the side of the lovely warm fire with my family, with the cat on my lap, watching the television programs that I watch every week. But I confronted my fears. I knew that to do this, to come away on my own, meant an opportunity for a little bit of personal growth and a little bit of self-care. I confronted my fear. I addressed it. I'm here. I've had a marvellous time. It has been an amazing opportunity to invest in myself, to think about the future, to think about where I am now, and to think about getting better on my journey as a human being, to get to my end destination of Chap Nirvana as the best version of myself. So, confront your fears. Sometimes when that opportunity comes and you feel that sense of holding you back because you don't want to do something outside of your normal parameters, do not let it hamper you. Go forward, grasp the nettle, confront that fear. Now my penultimate tip for you, number four, is really about putting your health first. And I'm not just talking about your mental well-being, which is really what we are talking about here today when it comes to self-care, but your physical health is important too. They go hand in hand. Both are on a continuum as you go through life, and we have peaks and troughs, but we are largely in control of our physical health to a degree. And we live in amazing times, don't we? You know, I'm 54. My, one of my grandfathers was 54 when he died, actually on the instance of his third heart attack. And my other grandfather was 58 when he died, also on the instance of his third heart attack. But I aim to live or outlive both of my grandfathers by some considerable degree because I'm taking charge of my health. I put my own health first because it's easy to overlook it. You know, as I say, we're all so busy. Health can become that thing we're going to take care of at some point in the future. Oh, I'm going to join a gym in the new year. I'm going to, you know, lose a few pounds in the new year. And when the new year comes, something else happens and we put it on the back burner. But the truth is, now's the time to do it. Now is the time to address that situation. Often, many things are entirely preventable. You know, like obesity, for instance. How many of us feel overweight? I know I do. Right? I've gained a few pounds this last year. I look at images of myself now and I actually don't like the way I look. So I'm intending on doing something about it. And it's time to grasp the nettle. It's no good, keep putting it off, keep putting it off. Do it some point in the future. And when it comes to your long-term physical health, obviously we live in a time where there are so many scientific advantages. Now, prostate cancer, right? That's something which affects so many men. If you're over, say 45, 50, maybe have a conversation with your doctor about having an annual screening test. Bowel cancer. I turned 54 the other day. I had a large package come through the post from the National Health Service here in the UK telling me I'd reached an age 
in which I became eligible for um, bowel cancer screening. Wonderful advantages of a free national health service, but yes, of course I'm going to take advantage of it. The thing that many people might do is, well, I don't want to do that. You know, there's no point. I'm, I've got no problems. But of course, taking prevention is the key to long-term health. So my piece of advice to you today is put your health first. Do not keep putting things off into the future. Do not overlook the opportunities to take a preventative screening test, regardless of what age you are. Think about your family heritage. Maybe there's instances of certain types of cancer in your family, which are more likely to reoccur down the genetic heritage. That might be you. Take that screening test. At least have a conversation with a healthcare professional who can help you put your health first. Now, my final tip for you today is one which I think we can all get on board with, and it's a pleasurable one. And it is this, treat yourself occasionally, all right? Do not just go through life and struggle and strive and have nothing to show for it. An occasional treat is that little light at the end of the tunnel which keeps you going on those difficult shifts in work. Now, that, that treat can be a weekend away fishing. It can be just an evening in the pub once a month with friends and associates. It can be that slap up meal, either on your own or in the company of other people. It doesn't matter, does it? But it's a treat. It's something you wouldn't do every day and something which is of an absolute pleasure for you to do, which isn't part of ordinary life. A lot of people neglect this. They overlook it. They live an austere life and they don't really take a moment to enjoy the simple pleasures. Now, for me, my little treat has been to come here to have four days in the wonderful city of Maastricht uh, and just doing some self-reflection and some thinking as well as filming a few videos as well for tax purposes of course so treat yourself just remember though a treat is a treat all right if you have a few beers with your friends that's a treat all right it's not an everyday thing if you have you know, if, you, if your little treat is uh, a plateful of highly calorific, greasy, fattening food, make sure it's a treat to be savoured occasionally, not on a daily basis. Treats are treats for a reason. They're just to reward ourselves every so often. So there we go, folks. <coughs> Those were <coughs> my five tips that helped me get through life, applying self-care to my life journey. So thanks for listening today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, those of you who are interested, you might be saying to yourselves, why on earth has the guy come to Maastricht? What's all that about? Well, it was a personal choice, um, just to give you an idea. Maastricht is a, an amazing city in the Netherlands, which is very near the borders with uh, Germany and Belgium. So it's a very cosmopolitan location. It's very arty. I've enjoyed an afternoon in an art gallery yesterday, which was thoroughly illuminating. And as you just walk around the city, you come across lots of interesting cultural things. And here's a point in question. I will show you something in just a moment. This park here sits on what used to be the old city zoo. And this is one of the old exhibits, an old cage, which animals obviously, back in the days where we didn't treat animals too well, used to be kept. And an artist has put an installation in here, which I remember seeing the first time I came to Maastricht, got to be 10 years ago now, and it's called, I think it's called something like the dead giraffe, but you'll understand, I'll just show you. So what you're looking at here, hopefully you can see that quite well, is basically an installation in which a giraffe is lying dead or dying, and there is a female, uh, a sort of mannequin, a, a model of a human being, tending to this giraffe which is dying and in essence what this does here it gives us uh, a sort of an, a, a, a moment to think perhaps um, of the sadness and maybe the, the the negativity of the way that humanity and their dominion over animals has ultimately played out sorry I, I'm having trouble getting that in the scene view but I think you get it you know it, it is quite haunting when you see this full-sized um, effigy of a giraffe with this female human tending to it and it does make you think about the way that we have treated the animal kingdom with our um, well, our dominion over them as the bible would say so there we go hope you've enjoyed this video giving you an insight into my self-care regime if you have give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more subscribe if you'd like to support the channel 
you can buy me a coffee, you can become a patron, you get extra videos if you do, and then you can also drop me an email or just leave me a comment. And it'll be my pleasure to try and help you answer a question, gives you my, give you my observations and advice. So until the next time, I've got to get back to my self-care now, and I will see you again very soon.